Okay, so in this video, we will consider a nice application of the definite integral by finding the area of a region bounded by given curves. Because if you remember, if you have a single function, let's say f of x between a and b, and you integrate the function f between a and b, what you have is the area below the curve from a to b if f is positive, if f is negative, you have the negative of the area. And we can use the same idea to find the area of even more complicated regions. So here is such an example. We want to find the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals 2x and y equals x squared. So the first step will be sketching this region in the xy plane. So let's first find our points of intersection. Where will these curves meet? That should always be your first step. Before you attempt to sketch, although the curves here are very simple, Sometimes you'll encounter more complicated curves that will give you more complicated regions. And finding first the points of intersection will be very useful. So points of intersection. Where do these curves meet? Well, we simply have to equate them. The first curve y equals 2x, the second curve y equals x squared, so x squared will be equal to 2x. Subtract 2x on both sides. Every time you're looking for solving a, an equation involving polynomials, you just want to have your polynomial equal to 0, so then you can factor. Factor an x and you're left with x times x minus 2 is equal to 0. This is not quite obvious. The only way for this to be 0 is x is 0 or x is 2. And we want the points of intersection. So now we have our x coordinates. OK, so the first point, x is 0. And if x is 0, y is 0 squared, which is also 0. So we have the origin as our first point of intersection. The second point, x is 2. And you can always take either curve to give you the y value because they are points of intersection, so they must satisfy both equations. And you can check. Plug in x equals 2 in both, you'll have 2 times 2, 4, 2 squared, 4, and you have your second point of intersection. So 0, 0, 2, 4. Let us now sketch our region. So y equals 2x, y equals x squared, and the points of intersection are 0, 0, 2, 4. Let me try and produce a large sketch of the region. Here's our y, here's our x-axis. So the first curve, y equals x squared. It's just the standard quadratic. And if you look at our points of intersection, 0, 0 is the origin, 2, 4 is somewhere here. And you'll see the region is only in the first quadrant of the xy plane. So we won't look at x squared for the negative x-axis because we don't care about this part of the curve. So y equals x squared, our first curve. And y equals 2x, we'll cut through it. And that's just a straight line. And so we see our region. The region bounded by the curves y equals 2x and y equals x squared is clearly this region. Even if you continued x squared, it wouldn't matter. You'd still get this as your region. So this is the region R. And we want the area of this region. Let's include our points of intersection, x equals 0, y equals 0, the origin. And our second point clearly is this point, where x equals 2 and y equals 4. So now we have the sketch of our region. How do we find the area of this region? Well, if you remember, the idea is all we need is the area of one rectangle as we add the areas of all the rectangles, we get the total area of the region. And there are two ways we can look at this. We can take vertical rectangles, or we could take horizontal rectangles. 
And I'll do both in this example to show you that both methods work. And you might wonder, well, if using a vertical rectangle works, why bother with a horizontal rectangle? Well, the reason is for some examples of curves, bounding regions, one method might be better than the other in the sense of giving you a simpler integral. So it's good to understand how you can either use vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles and every time you want to find the area of a region bounded by curves, always ask yourself, would a vertical rectangle or a horizontal rectangle give me a easier solution? So first we'll go with a vertical rectangle. So let's take an arbitrary rectangle in our picture. So we take a little rectangle and all we want is the area of this rectangle. Well, we need two things, right? The area of a rectangle is the width times the height. Well, the rectangle here is positioned along the x-axis. And think that we will take rectangles whose width will be shrinking to zero. So we'll take rectangles with a width that is infinitesimal. So if you think of it, you say, okay, how wide is this rectangle? Well, the width is a small change along the x-axis and a good name for this of course is dx because we know we can't just pick a fixed width as this will give us clearly an approximate area but as the width of our rectangle shrinks to zero then we'll get the exact area that's why we use dx and not delta x dx is an infinitesimal change in x because we know that we cannot get the exact area without letting the width of our rectangle shrink to zero, and that is what dx represents. Well, what about the height of our rectangle now? Because we have dx, everything we measure must be a function of x. And so you see, the height of the rectangle is a change along the y-axis. And if you want the height, the length of a change along the y-axis, it will be, of course, a larger y-value minus the smaller y value. Well, the larger y value is on the line, and here y equals 2x. The smaller y value is on the quadratic, where y is equal to x squared. And so, of course, if you want the length of a segment along the y-axis, you take the larger y value, 2x, minus the smaller y value, x squared. And now we have the height of our rectangle. And so we are essentially done now. You say, okay, the area of the rectangle is the base times the height, or if you prefer, the height times the base. So the height is 2x minus x squared. That is the area, not the area, but the height of our rectangle. And if we do height times the width, which is dx, now we have the area of a single rectangle. Once we have the area of one rectangle, how do we then get the total area of the region? Well, if you think of it, we have to sum, we have to add the areas of all the other small rectangles in the picture. Right? You'd have you know, this one, this one, and so forth. And as you add the area of all the rectangles, you will get in a limit the exact area of the region. Well, adding up is summing. That is the symbol of integration, right? Our long stretched out S means we have to sum the area of the rectangles. And we're summing from where to where? Well, if you look, we're summing with respect to X, right? x is the position of an arbitrary rectangle, and if you look at your region, the span of your region along the x-axis goes from x equals 0 all the way up to x equals 2. And you can see now that if we sum the area of the rectangles from x equals 0 all the way up to x equals 2, we will get the total area of the region.
and this is what the definite integral gives us, that is our area, and then we can evaluate this of course very easily with the fundamental theorem of calculus. To evaluate a definite integral, we first need to find an antiderivative of our function. And once we have our antiderivative, we evaluate at two bounds of integration, 0, 2, and we will subtract the values. The antiderivative of this is quite easy. Power rule, we get 2x squared over 2. minus power rule x3 three over 3 and we evaluate this from 0 to 2 of course before we'll simplify 2 over 2 cancels and we're left with as our antiderivative x squared minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to 2 and now we evaluate actually this will be very short so let me just leave it here so we have this function at x equals 2, so 2 squared is 4, minus 2 cubed is 8 over 3, minus the function at x equals 0, but if you plug in x equals 0 in here, you get 0. And so in the end, what are we left with? Well, 4 minus 8 thirds minus 0, so it's just 4 minus 8 thirds. 4, if you put over 3, is 12 over 3. 12 minus 8, of course, is 4, and so we get the area is 4 thirds, and that's it. Look at how elegant the solution is. And this is not an easy or a trivial question. But if you look at the region bounded by the curves y equals 2x and y equals x squared, the area of this region, using our knowledge of the definite integral, is simply 4 thirds. So now we're done, but let's look at the solution if we had used, instead of a vertical rectangle, a horizontal set of rectangles. We know that if things make sense we should get four thirds again. So let me reproduce the sketch and I will attack this using horizontal rectangles. Okay. y equals x squared, y equals 2x, and again we had the points of intersection, 0, 0, and here if you remember x was equal to 2 and y was equal to 4. And now again we will not approximate the area with vertical but with horizontal rectangles. So let's draw a generic horizontal rectangle and let's find the area of this rectangle. Well, the position now of the rectangle is along the y-axis and if you ask, well, okay, to find the area of the rectangle we need the width and the length, right? This times this will give you the area of the rectangle. Well, what is the width of the rectangle? Well, it's a, an infinitesimal change, but now it's a change not along the x-axis, but it's a change along the y-axis. So, of course, an infinitesimal change along the y-axis is simply dy. So the width of our rectangle is dy. What about the length here? Well, Let's drop this down. If you look, the length of your rectangle is the length of a segment along the x-axis. So you need the bigger x value here minus the smaller x value here. So at both points, what is x equal to? Well, here we are on the curve y equals x squared. 
but we need to solve for x now. And again, because we have a dy, everything we measure must be a function of y. Well, this is quite easy. Everything is positive, so if y is x squared, to solve for x, take the square root on both sides, and so x will be the square root of y. So the right end point here is x equals root of y. The left hand point, what is x as a function of y? Well, the curve is y equals 2x. So if you solve for x as a function of y, x will be simply 1 over 2 times y. So the left hand point, the x value, since we are on this curve, x is 1 over 2 times y. Or if you prefer, y over 2. And now we can find the length of this segment. I can still call this h, as if I simply put the picture on its side. This really is the height of the rectangle, dy is the width. So I'll still be calling this h. Okay, well, again, we want the length of a segment along the x-axis, so bigger x value, root of y, minus smaller x value, right? big x value minus small x value, and here x is y over 2. We know we'll have to integrate, so instead of writing root of 1, root of, of y, we'll write y to the power of 1 half, minus y over 2. And now we are essentially done, right? You say, okay, to find the area of the rectangle, it's just the height times the width, so it's this times dy. I'll put it here. So y to the 1 half minus y over 2. This is the height of our rectangle times the width dy is the area of just one rectangle. But again we want the area of the entire region so we must add, we must sum the area of all the other rectangles. So if I complete the picture, I draw the other rectangles. You can see as you add the area of all the rectangles, you get in the limit as dy shrinks to zero the area of the entire region. And now here's where you have to be careful, right? We are summing, we are summing the area all our little rectangles, but if you look, our rectangles are positioned along the y-axis. So we have to sum these rectangles along the y-axis. And these rectangles begin here, when y is 0, and they go all the way up to where y is equal to 4. So you see that the bounds of integration will depend on whether you have a vertical rectangle or a horizontal rectangle. When we used a vertical rectangle, we went from x equals 0 to x equals 2, so 0 to 2. But because we have a horizontal rectangle here that is positioned along the y-axis, our rectangles span from y equals 0 all the way up to y equals 4. And by adding up the area of all the rectangles from y equals 0 to y equals 4, we should be getting the entire area of our region. Well, let's see if we're correct. And we hopefully will get 4 thirds, because we're finding the area of the same region in two different ways. Well, again, we can use here the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we first find an antiderivative of our function. And once we have our antiderivative, we will evaluate from 0 to 4. Well, here we can use again the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent. 
1 half plus 1 is 3 half. Divide by 3 half, you end up multiplying by the inverse, 2 thirds, minus 1 half stays 1 half. Power rule on y, you get y squared over 2, but 2 times 2 is 4, so we get y squared over 4. That is our antiderivative of the function. Then we must evaluate this function from 0 to 4. Well, let's plug it in. This function at 4, so if you plug in 4 here, you have the root of 4, which is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, so you get 16 over 3. Minus 4 squared is 16 over 4 is 4, so minus 4. Minus the function at 0. But if you plug in y equals 0 in both, you get 0 minus 0, which is, of course, 0. So what are we left with? Well, 16 over 3 minus 4 is, of course, 12 over 3. 16 minus 12 is, aha, 4 thirds. And that's it. So we get, of course, the same answer. The area of the region is, again, 4 over 3. And both solutions were rather nice, right? If I go back, using a vertical set of rectangles, the area ended up being the integral from 0 to 2 of this integral, which was quite easy to evaluate, and we got 4 over 3. And using horizontal rectangles, the area ended up being the integral now of this function but since it was with respect to y, the region span along the y-axis from y equals 0 to 4. And once again, it was a fairly easy integral, which gave us the same value, 4 thirds. But I really want to emphasize this. Always be aware of this. When you want the area of a region bounded by curves, you always have a choice of either a horizontal rectangle or a vertical rectangle. And I always try and think about this for a few seconds to think, will it be easier if I use a vertical rectangle or a horizontal rectangle? In some problems, one will be better than the other.